We're back with John DeMello, the most powerful man in Hawaiian music and the first Hawaii music producer to achieve a RIAA gold record. Let's go a little bit back now. How did this all get started? I mean, did you go on a different path or did you always start in music and, and that just became your, your you know, career? Because of my family and my upbringing, I was always around music and always around the Hawaiian part of it. I was exposed in a very young age to some incredible Hawaiian entertainers and I've been lucky enough to be around almost all of them, worked with almost all of them, you know, and it's, it's just an amazing thing. Now, when I was, you know, going, this is like, you know, from five years old up, and then I, you know, got through high school and I was starting to point at college and figure out what I wanted to do. And there was this new word on the horizon and it was called multimedia. Now, multimedia, when I was in high school, was an overhead projector, a, a Kodak uh, carousel machine, you know, with a, with a wired remote in your hand. And you could move and talk and you had a microphone. So you could add a voice, you could add some slides. And if you're really high tech, you had a 16 millimeter movie camera and a couple, about eight technicians behind you doing this whole thing, okay, and trying to follow you, well, this new word came up, multimedia. And, and you know, this mm-hmm. is, I saw potential in the future of, uh, on this whole When thing. was that, early 70s or? Uh, mid-60s. Uh-huh, okay? mid-60s. Mid-60s. And um, I saw it, and I started focusing at it. So the arts in general are very connected for me. I'm a very visual kind of guy. I got a degree in painting and fine arts at one of the, the third largest private schools in America. And this was in Berkeley. That must have been fun. It was great. In uh-huh. the mid-60s in Berkeley, it was, it was <laughs> yeah. insane. Okay, it was, it was wild. Fun. It was the Vietnam War. There were riots in the street. There was tear gas. The National Guard was in the street. It was like, you know, like, and, and I was looking for, you know, some spam musubi, you know. I, and I, they didn't have my food there. They didn't have anything there. And I was just, you know, shot into this new world, never living in the mainland, you know, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So it was quite an expansion from my brain, you know. And uh, and I was starving to death because I couldn't find anything to eat, you know. And we just have a special diet here in Hawaii. Um, so simultaneously, I went to this art school. It was uh, fascinating because I was always visual, always good in art, fascinating people. Professors, PhDs and stuff that were teaching me were just magical. The same time, I was going to UC Berkeley and sitting in on all every music class, everything I could get involved in there. And this was the center of music. And this, I arrived, so you attended two schools at the same time? Same time. Huh. And I arrived in San Francisco in the summer of love in 67, okay? <laughs> this was like, you know, Did what's you have any hard time happening? fitting in? Uh, no, but a hard time adjusting to the awareness of how you live. And, you know, we're so homogenized over here. We just have every kind of person you could think of in Hawaii. And, you know, there, there's, there's these medial strips down everything, okay? You're not supposed to go over there. You're not supposed to do this. not supposed to do that. That's the hardest thing for me. I just didn't see any of that, you know? And um, there were some great things. But I was going to um, rock and roll concerts every weekend, you know, at The Doors and Janis Joplin and Cream. And, in fact, uh, uh, Janis Joplin was the top of her pile right there with the, uh, the holding company. And she had a hand-painted Porsche, a Paisley. She had a Paisley print hand-painted Porsche, and we knew if that car was outside, she was in that bar drinking. And we'd, we'd find a car, we'd park, and we'd go in there, and we'd, we'd close the place down with Janis Joplin, you know, and drink with her all night long, being crazy, you know. And uh, the Doors and the Cream and uh, Country Joe and the Fish and you name it, and Jefferson Airplane, every weekend at the Fillmore and all the stuff in the city, you know, we'd be going to it live. It was right there, and it was just, it was happening. Jim Morrison came to our school and he read poetry for two hours, you know, his, his lyrics and such like that. Mesmerizing. You could hear a pin drop in the room. So my exposure in all of that environment, I think, led up to this whole kind of consciousness of, hey, something's on the horizon that is truly multimedia, that will let you use more than one sense at a time, hearing, seeing, smell, feel, touch, all of that kind of thing. And suddenly... Ten years ago, we have the Internet in front of us, and the Internet is just the most, most powerful media that's ever been uh, invented by mankind. We are able to reach anywhere in the world. We are able to reach, and with technology and with wonderful applications that people organize, like flash technology and things, there's, there's absolutely amazing things on the Internet that you, you really look at a screen, a flat, one-dimensional screen, and you scratch your head and say, this can't be happening. I mean, somebody's fooling me, you know. You know, there's something behind this screen. I got to look now just to make sure there's not a bunch of puppets in back of this or something, because it's so dimensional. 
and um, multimedia was was organized, and I was truly ready for it. I was already making short films. I was already editing and doing that kind of thing through uh, UC Berkeley and my art school, California College of Arts and Crafts. And I was already doing multimedia photography, painting. I got my papers in painting. I'm a painter, really. And I really paint with music. And it's, it's a very interesting thing, a sort of cross-platform kind of situation. But it's just an interesting time to grow up in and be around. And it was very stimulating. And uh, when I came back to the islands, it began. And it began in a way that was truly multimedia. And, you know, MTV was born and all these other things. And all of a sudden, music was more than music. It was vision. It was everything. And with the Internet, it's, it's even more than you could imagine at this point. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.